In our gospel today, St. Mark recounts some of Christ's interactions with the demons, how our Lord would free those that were possessed by the devil, and how the demons would be overtaken with this fear and trembling at the very person of Christ. How the Jews would bring those that were possessed before our Lord so that he might just cast them out. The devil, who in our enlightened society today, is nothing but an imaginary figure. The boogeyman. Someone that the church created, a superstitious church, in order to scare people into living a certain way, or maybe becoming a scapegoat to blame evil upon. And this is very convenient for the modern world, right? Because if you believe in the existence of the devil, then you have to believe in the existence of hell, which means it's possible that you can go there. And so they rather reject the idea of the devil completely so they don't have to face the reality that as a consequence of evil actions, they could go there. But God tells us differently through sacred revelation that we are not his most superior creation. That he created angelic beings. Beings that are not limited by material restrictions, that are smarter than us, more powerful than us, they cannot die. And some of these angelic beings sinned, and they turned away from God, and they now hate God. They hate us. And in their malice, they want to see us all burning in hell. God has warned us that we have a very real enemy that is determined to bring about our destruction. The demons are not the boogeyman. They are very real. And they are actively working for our damnation. And you see this when you look at history and you see how evil has progressed within society and throughout cultures. One thing leading to the other, ultimately leading to the complete moral depravity that we find our world in today. Things centuries ago that would be considered absolutely unacceptable have become the common norm. How does this happen? This progression is not random. It is very intelligent. There is a plan that is at work from a demonic mind. And it takes place throughout centuries. The devil is in it for the long run. And at the focus of the devil's attack is the family. The devil wants to destroy the family. Because if he can destroy the family, he can bring down humanity. Because the family is where you are raised. It's where you are formed. It's where you first learn about God. It's where you're taught to live morally and virtuously. It's where values are instilled into you. The family is where you are the most vulnerable. You realize that the majority of people's problems in their adult life stem from their family how they were raised, things that happened to them as children, things they got into while growing up. The family is where the devil can do the most damage. And so by attacking the family, he can attack us all the most because the family is the foundation of every society. God has established the family as the school of holiness. And so the devil has made it his target. And we see this when we look at the most prominent evils of today. For example, divorce, which has become an acceptable social norm today. But it's an attack on the very permanence of the spousal union of a husband and wife. And it has a ripple effect, affecting all the children that are involved who become collateral damage. They're deprived of a good example of what the love of a husband and wife is supposed to look like. 
Sometimes they lose the very presence of a parent, which means they're going to grow up in an unnatural state, a way that God never intended for the family to be. Or at times the children even become the battleground between a husband and wife's attacks on each other. Another case is abortion, the very destruction of the fruit of a husband and wife's love for each other, the rejection of God's precious gift of a child to them. Contraception, intentionally making the sexual act which is ordered towards life, intentionally making it barren, once again rejecting that precious gift of a child. Homosexuality, which completely destroys the very nature of husband and wife. And it's not just completely lifeless and barren, but it also annihilates the family altogether. Sexual abuse that takes place within families, whether that be immediate family members or other relatives, it does untold damage, unimaginable damage to the victims, especially if they're children. Transgenderism, which is the very rejection of the gender you have received from God and your parents, a rebellion against your identity and origin in the family. All of these things, all of these evils are direct attacks on the family. They are directed and ordered to its destruction. The devil is after your family. And you can't beat him. He is smarter than all of us. He is more powerful than all of us. He's not scared of any of us. There is only one that he fears. And that is God. God is the only one he fears. And you see that in the gospel today. Christ is just causing them to be completely scared. I mean, they run away from him. It's actually embarrassing. I mean, it's not even a fight. Christ is going around casting out demons left and right, and he's not even breaking a sweat. The devil is nothing in comparison to God. And so the only way that we are going to be victorious over the devil is if God is the one fighting our battles. The only way that we are going to protect our family from the attacks of the devil is if God is the one protecting them. And the only way that this is possible, that God is that protector of our families, is that if God is at the center of our family's life. Not a side note. We cannot expect the evils of the world not to penetrate into our families when God and the life that he has taught us to live are on the same level as the things of this world that the devil uses to lure us into sin. Our families are susceptible to the devil's attacks as long as God is not at the heart of our family. Next week is Super Bowl Sunday. How many American Catholics do you think are going to revolve their Sunday around their Super Bowl parties and not around God? How many Catholics do you think are going to go to Mass Saturday night? Or maybe not go to Mass at all, God forbid, because they don't want the worship of God to take time away from their worship of America's greatest sports day. You think the devil might be at work there? Sunday Mass, going to Sunday Mass, should not be something that we check off our list like it's a family chore. Well, I'm glad that's finally over with. Now I can actually start my Sunday and do what I want to do. No. Worship God on Sunday should be at the center of our family's life. It should be the high point. Unless God is not at the center of your family's life, which is exactly where the devil wants you. In fact, I would highly encourage all of you not just to go to Mass once a week every Sunday, but to go to Mass as much as you possibly can during the week as a family. There are families here 
that make a point to go to Mass during the week as much as possible. And I'll tell you, that is the best thing you can do to protect your family from the attacks of the devil and focus your family's life on God. Because at Mass, you come into contact with the very person of Christ. The very person that the demons fear. God has to be at the heart of our families. Another important way of making this a reality is going to monthly confession as a family, making a point to go together, making sure that you are all staying united to God and going to God together as a family. This should be a family practice. So that way your children will learn the importance of this sacrament, but also eventually down the road, they will be able to pass it on to their children and make it an integral part of their life. Also praying together daily as a family, especially the family rosary. You know, we make plenty of time to do the things that we wanna do, whether that be playing sports, watching movies or TV, getting on the internet, getting on YouTube, getting on Facebook. But if we don't take some time every single day to set aside for God, then what does that tell you about our priorities? That God's not at the top of the list. And that's exactly what the devil wants. Because that means he can slip in there with the things of the world. He can occupy your time the things of the world, even if they're not bad things. He can make you occupied with that so that you don't have time for God. Slowly pulling you away from him, making you vulnerable. The devil is after you and your family. He has a plan. And it's succeeding. When you look at society, it is succeeding. The family is being destroyed. The only defense is God. Staying close to Him. Being united to God. Constantly being in that state of grace. Letting Him fight our battles. Because when He fights our battles, no one can stand against us. The devil's attacks will fail if we don't allow him to pry his way in. And we do this by keeping God at the center of our lives. At the center of of our families. The devil runs scared at the person of Christ, his presence. So make Christ's presence the heart of your families. I leave you with the words of Saint Peter, written to the Christians of the early church. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him solid in your faith.